Okay, hi, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome on in here to our user group webinar. Um, today, uh, my name is Jim. I'll be leading our uh, session here today. I'm coming to you live on a cold and snowy day here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and we will be talking for the next 20 minutes or so uh, about uh, marking folks inactive in the membership module, both families and individuals, uh, and some of the things that you need to do to take care of that in the Church Windows membership module. Uh, before we get into that, a uh, quick word about your GoToWebinar control panel that everybody should have on your screens out there. Um, there is a small red or orange button usually up in the upper left-hand corner of that control panel that you can use to either minimize that screen to give you a little bit more room on your display to see what we're talking about here today, or you can maximize that to get access to the different features in that uh, control panel. Uh, most importantly, probably, is the little questions section there. Uh, I will be unlikely to have time to answer questions as I'm going through my presentation here today, but I will leave the room open after the presentation here today to answer any questions that you might have in regards to um, marking people as inactive and some of the things around that decision in the membership module. Uh, I don't anticipate this probably taking the entire 20 minutes, but uh, we will certainly cover it as thoroughly as we need to here today. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the version uh, of Church Windows that we are using for this presentation is the 21.18.2 version. The service release 2 was released uh, about a week or two ago uh, for Church Windows. And the uh, inactive, um, the inactive wizard screen that we're going to be looking at today was originally released with the service release one. So some of the screens that we're going to be looking at in our presentation here today, uh, you're only going to see them if you're on 21.18.1 or .2. So I just wanted to point out that version because if you're on uh, an older version of church windows. Uh, some of the screens that we're going to be looking at in our presentation here today, uh, you won't see them in your version. So you need to kind of get updated to the latest service releases to see some of the functions that we're going to be seeing here today. Okay, all of that being said, let's go ahead and launch into membership and open up our people window. This is where we have all of our membership and visitor records that we have set up here in the Church Windows membership module. Uh, now, just as a general overview here, in our Church Windows membership module, we have, uh, we can record an entire history of uh, people and households that have come in contact with your church, uh, for as many years as you've owned the program and has have been recording this data in the program. Uh, so attendance records, uh, contributions records, a history of what groups and classes folks participated in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, including um, uh, a history for folks who are no longer attending your uh, the church or people who have moved away or people who have passed away uh, you don't with if somebody were to move away or uh, leave the church or pass away in any number of ways you don't want to delete their records because all of that history you want to be able to still have access to that information uh, we have a field uh, built here into membership called inactive You'll see it on the uh, individual record side of the screen when you're looking at the people window here. Um, and what the inactive checkbox does for you is functionally it marks a record as, as, as an archive record in your database. And what an archive record means 
uh, that's really mostly my terminology uh, from a database perspective. An archived record, you can still get access to all of that information, all of that attendance history, all of that giving history, et cetera. But they won't be, those records won't be printing on any of your current reports. They won't, for example, show up on a directory if you print a new directory, if somebody is marked as inactive. Um, if you're printing labels, uh, like any of your reports that you generate out of membership, uh, individuals and households that have been marked as inactive will not show up on those reports. You can still get access to that information if you specifically want to go find it, however. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll over here a little bit to the right, so we'll see. There are a couple of other things that you get here with the inactive uh, field here. It's a checkbox. So uh, uh, this is a, a field that you can simply check whether somebody is a, a, uh, an active record or an inactive record just with a simple checkbox. There is a uh, reason for them being inactive, which is this little field here. And these are codes that you can create and edit, as well as a date that whatever caused them to be inactive occurred. So there's a couple of different scenarios we can go through with this. I'm going to start right here with this very first record. Um, this, in this case, this is a household that uh, has a single individual in it. So if you're looking at the, at, the, at the household over here on the left side of the screen and you look in the grid over here um, on the left, you're going to see a listing of all of the people in this household. This particular household only has one person in it. Uh, Nina here. So uh, in this case, in the case of a household where an individual um, moves away, passes away, whatever the appropriate thing is, you would come to their record and you'd put a check mark in this inactive uh, checkbox. When you put a check in there, the other two fields next to it become available. So the reason for them being marked as inactive becomes available when you do that. So if I click on my down arrow next to that, you're going to see a listing of all of the codes that you have set up for reasons somebody might be inactive. So let's say that uh, they moved away. Let's say that Nina here moved away. So we'll check left area in this case. And then there's a date that they that they moved away. So they moved away over the weekend or whatever. So you 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 check that in there. Once you have all of that information uh, recorded here, you click your save button at the top of the screen. You will notice now that um, their name when you when you're on their record. Uh, both over here in the household section down here, as well as on the tab where it shows their name at the top. This all shows up in red now. Um, so inactive records kind of show up in red when you are um, looking at that. Um, when I click on my down arrow for the person look up at the top, this is where you can search for individual records. You're going to see a series of these records listed in red here, and that indicates that they have been marked as inactive. And again, any future reports that you print by default are not going to include any of these folks that are listed as inactive. Um, another thing I did want to point out regarding the, the reason for being inactive, you can create new codes, edit and change the codes that you have by using this little button here, the little yellow pencil button with the plus minus in it. Um, you can click on that little button right there and then you can edit the codes that you have or add or change them on here. Okay. Reason number six. I can't think of one off the top of my head, I'm sorry. Um, but you can add any new code that you want to um, on that on that drop down there. Okay. Now that will be available um, for future folks when you mark them as inactive. Okay, cool. So that's the way that works when you've got an individual. Um, let me scroll over and find a family. I'm going to find the Bernard family here. Um, you'll see in the grid over on the left that we've got a husband and a wife 
uh, and a couple of kids, uh, Evan, Nikki, and their, their kids. So in this case, we've got a, the, the second example is, um, the, the, this is an example uh, where one of the individuals in a family is going to be marked as inactive. Um, and again, the terminology is a, can be confusing for some folks because some people have an inactive member code um, for the status field. So a lot of times you have inactive members listed here. That is different than marking a record as inactive in church windows, okay? Um, this field, once upon a time in prior versions of church windows, used to be called reason for termination. Um, but to get the, the, the terminology consistent through our program, we changed it to inactive here. So let's talk about uh, one member of a household uh, being marked as inactive for whatever reason. Let's say um, we have a, a tragedy here, Nikki passes away. So I would come to Nikki's record and I would select her name on the grid over here on the left. So we've got her record selected on the right. Now, this is the uh, new thing. When I put a check mark here for inactive, it's going to bring this um, inactive uh, wizard screen up here. So this kind of guides you through some of the changes that you can make for not only uh, the, the main person in the household that you're marking here as inactive, but also some of the other things that you might want to change for the other members of the family as well. Um, so it kind of walks you through some of these things you, you might want to consider. Again, this only appears in the service release one as well as the service release two for version 21. These are things that you would need to go individually to those other fields in prior versions of church windows. So it just walks you right through some of the things you want to consider. Required field changes for Nikki Bernard, you need to mark an inactive reason here at the top. So there are some other optional field changes that you see listed below that for Nikki's record, including the inactive date. Uh, and some of the other things you might want to consider here, uh, including the mailing label for the family. Um, so it is common um, that you may want to change the mailing label for the family and you may not. Okay. So in this case, if Nikki were to pass away, um, you can simply change the mailing label. Now it's just Evan Bernard's household, so you can change that mailing label there if it's appropriate in this case. Um, now, the other things that you can change if you want to, but you don't necessarily need to, family relation for Nikki, um, and then the status code for Nikki. Um, the reason you might want to leave them alone and not change them is what, that when somebody's marked as inactive, they're not going to show up on your reports anyhow. So if you keep their family relation and their active member codes the same as it was prior, what you've got is a history of kind of the way they used to be set up before they were, before they passed away or moved away or, or whatever occurred. Um, you can also, with this checkbox here, remove their directory report order. She's marked as secondary in the household. You can uncheck that um, from this screen. Now, the other ones, optional field changes for Evan Bernard right here. So Evan was her husband. He's still alive. He's still in the family. So there are some changes that may need to be done with his record, and that's what that's guiding you through here. So for example here, for family relation, you can come through here, and you can mark him as a widow, a widower, pardon me. You can change his marital status, and that's listed right here um as well uh so and then there's a couple of other notes for some things you may want to review down here um, you may need to edit the the pictures for the family may need to be edited if you do pictorial directories um, there are groups and classes uh updates that you may want to take a look at as well so it's just some other things that you may want to review um, that are listed there
I do, I, I do kind of want to point out one other thing and when it comes to Nikki's record and the family relation. Over in this grid on the left side, where it shows all of the individuals in the family, it also has a field here for a family relation for all of the individuals in that family. So if you did come into Nikki's record for her family relation, you can create, if you don't already have one, a family relation code for deceased. And if you mark them as deceased, it will show up on that grid over on the left next to the family record. So once you've kind of gone through this and considered the changes you want to make, once you click OK, it'll make all of those changes for you on those records. So you're going to see that she's marked as deceased over here in the grid on the left under the family record. Um, if I were to come over here to Evan's record, you now see he's going to be listed um, under family relation as uh, widower, et cetera. Okay? So that, that wizard kind of guides you through some of the things that you may want to change in the other folks in the family as well. Um, and then the last thing I kind of wanted to walk you through, and I need to find another family with multiple people in it here. Ah, that'll do. Um, the Ellison family here, Brian and Anne. We also have the opportunity here to mark an entire household as inactive. This is going to be useful a lot of times if a family moves away. Um, there is a button on the household record side of the screen up here at the top for making the entire family inactive, this button right up here. What that one is going to do when you click on that button, it's going to say it's going to mark all of the individuals in this family as inactive and will assign each of them the reason and the date that you put in here. So again, most commonly, this is going to be um, if, they, if they moved away. So we've got our uh, left area code in this case. And they moved away a couple weeks ago or whatever. So you can set that date as well. And when you do it this way, again, using the Make Family Inactive button on the household record, when you click OK, it makes those changes to each of the members of that family. So when we take a look um, at Brian's record, you're going to see that those things have been filled out for his inactive field right here. Okay? And again, any of the fields that are left behind on their records, that's just there kind of as a history because none of the, the active reporting that you run applies to records who are, have been marked as inactive. So for example, if I'm here looking at Brian Ellison's record, I've got a, a checkbox here for include on directory, right? So he's marked to be printed on the directory. He's got a directory report order field here that tells him the directory report how to organize this family. These records will not print on the directory because they have been marked as inactive. So there is no need to remove the include on directory checkbox, none of those other things that might lead to them um, showing up on other reports. The inactive checkbox that we created kind of overrides all of that for future reports. Okay. All right, that is the information I have for you guys here today. Again, you might want to, if you haven't gotten up to that service release one or two, service release two for version 21, I would recommend doing that so that you can get uh, the uh, inactive um, wizard window that we were looking at here earlier today. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me here today. If you're all set to get on with your day, feel free to go ahead and click on the X in the upper right hand corner of your GoToWebinar control panel, and that will exit you out of the room and get you on with the rest of your afternoon. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Cool. So for folks who um, want to hang out in the room for a little bit at this point, I will kind of go back through and see any questions that I might have gotten um, 
through the presentation here today. If you have any additional questions, feel free to go ahead and type those in now. Um, I am going to probably, I've got a number of questions in here. If it doesn't apply specifically to uh, the topic at hand, which is this inactive field, basically, um, I'll refer you to our support line number um, for additional questions outside of kind of the topic of our discussion here. Um, our support line is at 800. 533-5227 if you have, you know, kind of additional questions here today. Um, okay. Uh, okay, uh, Nima, Nina Albersham, when I marked her inactive, her name didn't show up in red. Uh, I believe it does now. Um, yeah, her name is showing up in red. It may not have immediately popped up as soon as I clicked it. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't paying that close attention. Perhaps it was when I clicked the save button when they turned red uh, on those records earlier in the presentation here today. Um, question about the include on directory. It's just a checkbox um, that tells the system that uh, that person shows up when you print the directory report is what that include on directory checkbox does for you and again yeah and some other questions coming in folks get a little bit confused uh, especially if for the status code now the status code field in membership is there to determine an individual's membership status with the church so that individual's relationship with your church is what the status code does and a lot of folks have a code for status called inactive member. So they're a member of the church, but they're not a regular participant. That is different, just a separate status code called inactive member to the separate field that we have that's called inactive, which marks them as inactive for your reporting purposes. Um, we went back and forth about leaving it on the old code called reason for termination but we have other things in our program that are termed as inactive so for example you can mark giving accounts as inactive you can mark um, accounts over on your chart of accounts as inactive and it does the same thing that those do, do for those other fields in our program just for membership records here we did it so that we had consistency for our terminology in the program. The inactive checkbox means the same thing in membership as it does in donations, as it does in accounting. It was just the decision that we made with that field. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, David had a question about if you have a, um, um, a family with a single individual in it, like Karen's family here, putting a check mark for inactive over here and clicking the make family inactive button up here, functionally do the same thing here since there's only one person in the family. That's correct. They, either one of those things will just mark Karen inactive in this case. They do both do the same thing in that case. Okay. Right. So um, Travis has a question about if a family moves away but then comes back, right? Um, you know, is there a, is that all you need to do is, is mark them as active again. So what was that? The Ellison family. So if they did move back, I can simply uncheck the inactive checkboxes. Now they will be available in the database again. I can now record attendance for them again. I can now record donations for them again. They're still active. They're, that makes them active again, right? So all of their history will still be there. And all you do is uncheck the box here and they're back and you're ready to do all your data entry with them again. Um, and then, you know, there are things that you can do with their giver number over in donations. 
Um, if you had removed their giver number previously, you can give it back to them. That stuff's all over in donations. But yes, you can you can make changes to their giver numbers uh, in those situations if you need to. Yeah, different situations about you know membership status. That's that's kind of up to how you guys want to take care of those things, right? This is simply for whether you want their record to show up on reports um, in the membership module, as well as like for recording attendance and for recording giving over in donations. If somebody moved away and then moved back, it's kind of up to you what you need to do in terms of whether you change their status code, whether you change the family's category, whether it's in the member file or the visitor category, you know, those things are kind of up to you guys, how you want to handle those situations. Um, okay, yes, uh, Carol, um, uh, status codes, yeah, you can edit your status codes all you want to. Um, there's that same little button with the pencil and the plus minus in it next to the status code field there. Um, for all of your um, list fields here in membership, you've got similar buttons that allow you to edit your codes however you want to. So if you are confused by the term of inactive member here, you can change it to something else if you wanted to. Um, yeah, all of that is editable using those little pencil buttons that are next to those list fields. Um, okay, so I... I Certain people are reacting to certain answers I gave to you earlier, and then I don't remember what your original question was. So I apologize, Travis. Um, if somebody came back, is it a visitor not back as active? I, what was the original question there? I apologize. Uh, if a family is moved, I'm, I'm having to reread this. As we get into these more complicated situations, as you have, if you have specific questions, feel free to give us a call into our support line number. Um, if a family moved away and you mark them as inactive, like in the Allison family, and then they move back, you uncheck the inactive checkbox, and then there may be other things that you need to review on their record. If you need to change their status code to something that was different than before, you may do so. If you need to change their family's category to something different, you may do so. Um, somebody moves away and you mark them as inactive, that gets them off of your reports is all that does. When they come back and you uncheck the inactive checkbox, they're now available for your reports again. Then it is up to you to determine what some of the other things that may need to be changed on their records. Okay. So that's kind of up to individual situations. Right, Diane asked, the fact that the family moved be retained after you remove the inactive code because they returned. Oh, I see. Um, so you're asking about you unchecked it for left area and then you then you mark them as inactive again. That is correct. The code will be removed from their record. So the sort of the fact that they had moved away previously, that will be deleted from their record because you remove that inactive checkbox. You can maybe go into the comments tab for the individual and, and say moved away or whatever okay um, but yeah that's right the, the the specific left area on this date will be kind of lost when you uncheck that box that is correct so again you may want to use the comment section to kind of edit those things if you need to keep track of that
the drop down list of names for Nina. Um, Nina Abershine is in red currently. I do not know at what point it was in black and then it became red after I marked her as inactive. It appears that that has uh, uh, corrected itself now. I do not know when that occurred. Okay. Um, cool. Great. Thanks, Diane. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to leave the room open for just a couple more minutes. If you have any uh, last second questions here, feel free to type them in at this point. I'm pretty sure we're good here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close up the, the room here. So thanks for joining me here, everybody. If you have additional questions, feel free to just give us a call into our support line, again, which is at 800-533-5227. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining me, everybody, and I hope you have a lovely afternoon.